Hello, Cornerstone. This is Pastor Morgan. I want to welcome you to the midweek encouragement message. And uh, But in the Bible, Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, is a scripture the Lord has been uh, speaking in my heart about that I'll just share with you a few thoughts. Uh, Matthew 16, Jesus says in verse 18, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And so I always, when I, re, when I, when I think about that verse and and I've been meditating on that verse. It, I began to say to myself, well, he said, I will build my church. So number one, we know exactly what Jesus is doing, his, his vision, his intention, the move of his spirit, the, the, the free, full move of his spirit is where doing what? It's building his church. That's, this is the vision of Jesus. And then I say, well, well, who is he? Who is he? Psalms 24, verse eight. I love this. He said, who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty in battle. So when Jesus said, I will build my church, it's the Lord strong and mighty in battle. And we are can rest assured that he will not fail. He will destroy every hindrance and his church will be built. And And we can, but I believe we have to, we have to see that not only globally, but we have to see that locally and see that what God is doing locally. And that, I know there are, there are many churches in our area, but we're just talking about Cornerstone. So what is God doing? God is building Cornerstone. He is building his church. He is building the house of God. And I think that there is often a, mis, a misunderstanding or a misinterpretation about the word church. Uh, because while it is true, Jesus says and speaks about his body, which is the church. There's no question about that. That's the global church. Every child of God in the whole planet is part of the church of Jesus Christ. But at the same time, there is a, there is a practical application to that verse. And that is that the Bible says in the book of Acts that they 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 assembled every single day. There was a gathering of the believers. They were gathering, and and uh, whether it was in homes or whether it was at the temple or wh wherever that was, there was a gathering, and God and they would gather, and that's where God would meet with them. With we call in a, a corporate anointing. There was a there was a higher level of anointing when the believers gathered together, and uh, uh, th that's important because. If we just simply see the church as the global church and every born again believer being a part of that global church and we fail to recognize what God is doing and gathering those people into assemblies, then, uh, then we're not seeing, we're not seeing the whole picture. Uh, matter of fact, even this verse, he said, I will build my church. I mean, uh, how can, how can building his church re refer to individuals being saved? Because in our understanding of the church, as soon as a person is born again, he's made a part of the body, which is the church. That's a true statement. That is true. But, but, uh, but, but build. He doesn't, he doesn't build you to, 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 that doesn't save you. In other words, you get saved and then he builds. In other words, what does, what does Jesus do? He's taking each individual person that is saved and he's t gathering them like pieces of a puzzle and he's building a church is building a local assembly. Uh, and really the, the historical understanding of the Greek word church uh, 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 actually confirms that. The Greek word is ekklesia, and it literally means a called out assembly of people. Uh, historically, you know, in, in the Greek culture, and that the, and the New Testament was written in the Greek, in the Greek culture, you had a, you had a city or you had a, maybe you had a country and uh, all the citizens, you know, live throughout that city or live throughout that that country. And then uh, there come there, there was a, an important meeting of all the citizens of the of the let's say city, all all the important all the citizens of the city. And so there was a there was an announcement that would go throughout the city that was calling for a gathering. And so all of the citizens would gather in one place. And the moment they all gathered in one place, that gathering was called an ecclesia. All, in other words, they're citizens. They live throughout the country, but actually, but actually, uh, they're not. Uh, 
actually there, there is, is, is not the, the ecclesia until there is a, until there is a, until there is a gathering. And so it is with the church. We are, we are the body of Christ. We are the church. But what Jesus is doing through the power of the Holy Spirit, he is gathering us together in one place and, uh, and building a local assembly that is going to have certain, is going to have com certain components with gifts and fruits and operations and anointings and, 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 and office gifts that are going to function together for the edifying of the body of Christ so that, uh, people can be blessed and that, that place can become a lighthouse to the world. Hallelujah. And so we, we need to know, and you need to know that you're a part of that and you're an important part of that. And so as we, we submit ourselves and yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit, he's going to put us, he's going to plant us in a local assembly. He's going to plant us in a local body. And our, our, uh, our involvement in that local body is important for that whole body. We each have, we each have something we bring, something that we do that God by his spirit has, uh, has anointed us to do. Now, now it's, it's important for us to see that, uh, the culture. Now let's talk about the gathering, the assembly. The culture of the church, uh, has trained people, uh, I guess just the way it's set up has trained people to be good list hearers or good listeners. <laughs> Hopefully they're good listeners, but, but hearers and, and, uh, and not doers. Uh, in the, in the early, early years, uh, you go back to the book of Acts, you're going to see that every member, every person was involved in, was involved in ministry. And they were preaching, they were teaching, they were witnessing, they were involved, they were involved in, in the ministry. Um, but then something happened around the year 300 AD. There come a change in the church. And, uh, and I won't go into all that detail, but, but there was a council that met. And in that council, they, 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 they divided between the clergy and the laity. In other words, they said, okay, this is the clergy, this is the laity. They made a division between the two, which really the Bible doesn't make that division because the laos or the, the, the people of God are the same ones as the kleros or the, or the gifted of God. Amen. Uh, the Bible doesn't, so there are different offices. And so we recognize a person uh, by his office or by his gift that God by his grace gave to that person. But but the but but in the New Testament there was no difference between the laos and the and the and the and, and the cl and the kleros or the clergy what we they call the clergy. But this this council got together and they divided between the laos and the uh, the clergy and the laity, and then they took all of the ministry of Jesus and gave it to the clergy, and then they defined the ministry of the of the laity and said the the minister the ministry of the lay, layman. The ministry, the ministry of the, of the layman is to sit and say amen. Now that was, that, that came into the church at the, what we call Catholicism. That, that was, that was part of a, of a, of a, of a uh, departure from what Jesus had actually taught and said these signs will follow all believers and, and the practice of what we see in the book of Acts. And so they, Catholicism defined the, the ministry of the layman and that was to sit and say amen. So in other words, you be a good listener. You come to church and be a good listener. And you just sit there and, and, uh, and behave yourself and say amen when the pastor makes a good point. And once you have sit and said amen, wow, you have fulfilled your ministry. Well, uh, that's not true. That is absolutely not the truth. Uh, one of these days, you and I and all of us are going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ and Jesus is going to look at us and say, what did you do with the calling I put in your life? And people are going to say, well, Jesus, I went to church and I sat and I said, amen. I, I supported the pastor every time he preached. And every time he made a great point, I always encouraged him with a, with a good amen. Well, that's not your ministry. Uh, that, that is not your ministry. Just sitting and saying amen is not a ministry. Thank God for, for people that are encouraging when the pastor is preaching, but that is not your ministry. Uh, being a good listener is not the ministry, is not your ministry. Uh, Matthew chapter seven, Jesus says, let me read this. Matthew seven, 24. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, does them, I will liken him to a wise man which built his house upon a rock and the rain descended, the floods came and the wind blew, beat upon that house and it fell not for his founded upon a rock. So Jesus here is saying that the person who is, 
uh, who, who not only hears the word, but is a doer of the word, that is the one that's going to stand in the time of trial, in the time of testing, not just simply a good listener. And he said, everyone that, in verse 26, and everyone that hears these things of mine, he's a listener, and doeth them not. So all he is is a listener. He, he's not a doer, he's just a listener. And I shall be likened to a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So Jesus differentiates between listeners and doers. And so, and again, the culture of the church has, has lent itself and has really trained members that that's all all is required of you is to be a good hearer just just go to church and be a good listener that's all and once you've done that you fulfilled your purpose and that is absolutely not the truth i'm telling you that jesus christ died on a cross came in your life and when he did that he made you righteous so that the Holy Spirit could come inside of you and empower you to be a witness and a worker in the kingdom of God. And there is a, there is a need, there is a call of the Spirit of God for every believer to recognize the gifting, the calling, the anointing of the Holy Spirit that God has placed upon your life. And uh, maybe you've never gotten involved before. Maybe you've never done what maybe the Spirit of God is speaking to you to do but I'm telling you, it would be. It would, it, I'm telling you, take a step. I mean, break, break the, uh, break the inertia, break free of that religious tradition that just says it's enough to be a an attender and a good listener. Listen to what James says, James chapter one verse twenty two. He says, "But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only." In other words, you, yeah, be a hearer, listen to the word. But then be a doer of the word. And he said, then he said, deceiving your own self. So simply to be a hearer of the word and not a doer or a practicer of that message then uh, is a form of deception. It's a form of darkness. Now think about that. Now think about that. Now we, 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 we pray in our church and we pray for a revival. We're praying for revival in America. We're praying for revival in America. We're praying for revival that's going to shake our nation. We, we declare there is fire in the Carolinas. We declare there is fire in the Carolinas. I heard that in my spirit back uh, earlier this year while I was fasting and praying. I heard the Lord. It was almost like a shout. He said he, he didn't say there will be. He just said fire in the Carolinas. I heard that message. Amen. And, uh, and with that, I had this impression and I saw this picture of what I saw was it was a tremendous revival. People, the, the place was jam packed and the power of God was flowing and, and thousands of people were getting saved, healed, delivered, blessed, powerful by the power of God. Uh, yes, uh, I believe in that, but I'm telling you right now that, that, uh, the, the greatest hindrance, the greatest hindrance is not the people that don't go to church. The, the greatest hindrance are the, are the, are the people that, that are in, in, this, in this form of deception where they think that simply attending church and being a good listener is all that's required. No, you have to be a doer of the word. You have to, you have to, you have to personally partake of the ministry of Jesus and you've got to, you've got to get involved You've got to be a, a minister. Now, you may not be in an office of you know, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, but simply you're in the body of Christ. There is a ministry. There's a ministry in your life. God filled you with the Holy Spirit. He filled you with the Holy Spirit, and he gave you, he gave you power. He gave to you power. Now, if I were to look at the work of the church, the work of the church we can, in, in a real broad way, very simply, the work of the church, I believe, can be divided into, into three main compartments. The what is the work of the church? Number one is prayer. It's what Dr. Doug Small called the work of prayer. Prayer is the work of the church. The, the, the prophecy, Isaiah chapter 56 verse 7, God said, my house 
shall be called a house of prayer. And so the main function of the local church is to be a place where people gather and pray. Now, yeah, you ought to have a prayer life of your own, have a prayer closet, 100%. I believe in that, and we preach that. But I'm telling you, there is a great need for God's people to come together and pray together. Learn how to pray together. Amen? And so that is number one. What is the work of the church? Number one is prayer. Number two is evangelism. Amen. It's evangelism, reaching out to the, to the unsaved. There are many of them that live in our community, and we've got more people moving in this community than ever. And God, is, God has positioned us right here in the middle of a harvest field. We live on a mission field right here in Wake County, North Carolina, and God is sending them to us from all over the world. You don't have to get on an airplane and fly halfway around the world. They're right here in Fuqua Verena. Amen. So evangelism, and we have the church, we have, what do we have? We have lifelines, uh, Jeanette leads that, they go knocking on doors, they go to, they go to uh, at parks and wherever, wherever there are people gathering and they go there to win souls. Uh, or there is street reach, man, these, these guys are going into these, these apartment complexes with our truck, with the truck, the church truck. The street reach truck that's fully equipped and going in there and they're, uh, and they're, they're preaching the gospel and children are being saved. Kids are getting saved. Adults are getting saved. Amen. Uh, you know, you know, but listen, there's, there's plenty of room for more. We, we can form more teams. Amen. We can form more teams. We can go to, we can go to, you know, we could, I mean, really, we could do three apartment complexes every Saturday. <laughs> Amen. Now we'd have to do some work and, and work to find those, those apartment complexes in the triangle area where, where you could get in there. But the whole point is, is do the work of an evangelist, do the work of evangelism that Jesus called us to do. And the number three is discipleship, discipleship. That is, Jesus said, make disciples of all nations. Not enough to just get them saved. We've got to disciple them. And God wants every believer to be involved in discipleship. That is that you look around you and see these new people that are coming that are getting saved and you put your arm around them and you, 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 you invite them to coffee, you invite them to lunch and you build a relationship with them. And in the context of that relationship, you share with them the truth that God over the years has deposited inside of you that's caused you to grow up in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You can do that. That's what God called us to do. Now, we can get busy with a lot of things at church that just add, that just, uh, you know, that, that, that are, you know, good. But it, th that's the, wor the work of the church is prayer, evangelism, discipleship. Amen. And so you can't just be a listener. You got to be a doer. And you got to be plugged in to one of those areas. The prayer, evangelism, discipleship. Discipleship. Now, as you know, our C groups will, are, are not meeting during the summer, but in September they'll start again. And I'm telling you, our C groups is a great opportunity for discipleship. And we've got people that are qualified, that are, that have, that are mature in the Lord that can lead these groups. And we've got people that have got homes that can host these groups. And we can form a whole lot more groups. And through those groups, we can disciple, we can disciple new converts. We can disciple new people coming into the church and see them grow up in the Lord. Man, one of the most exciting things in the world is to see somebody get saved, have a real experience with Jesus, a life-changing experience with Jesus, but then watch them grow up in the Lord. Hallelujah. Man, there's some people at our church I could just point out and tell their story when I first met them, wow, they, 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 uh, they didn't know, they didn't, they didn't know much that they weren't in church. They, they didn't go to church. They didn't go to a teaching church. And man, when the word of the Lord began to, began to just uh, fill their heart and just watch them grow up in the Lord and to go from a place of not saved to a place of saved to a place of being strong in the Lord. Ephesians says strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. We'll have church tonight, Wednesday night, seven o'clock. I'll be there with God, by God's grace and hope to see you there. I love you. God bless you.